all my sessions i'll just uh, oh, okay good, uh, good afternoon ma'am i think uh, dr sangeeta ma'am is there and uh, a very warm welcome first of all ma'am and uh, aman has introduced the ma'am uh, with the credentials the only thing is uh, uh, there is a glitch i think from the aman side ma'am will be talking about the importance of teamwork okay so i think that is a more suitable topic for this session and uh, here when we talk about so i think ma'am that was the correction uh, to be done yeah 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 thank so you so thank, much ma'am uh -huh. thank you mr amit and uh, thanks to all the students and uh, like i was saying uh, in all sessions all training sessions or classroom sessions we always believe that uh, it's a two way process you know we teach something we get something from your experience see because academic knowledge may be quite static but what we learn from that how we evolve that is something which is really meaningful so with that i welcome you all to the session on team working i'll just put up my slides we'll be speaking about team working for an hour and a half and i assure you that the topic which i sab has selected it's probably even more important than the technical topics that uh, you are being exposed to because soft skills are something which cut across all academic functional technical domains okay so uh, uh, we'll speak about time, team team working we'll be having some case let some examples some academic knowledge and uh, while you listen to me my uh, humble submission is pick up each nugget of the concept try to integrate it with your life and at appropriate time do raise up your hand and uh, you know let's listen to you about your experiences because that's the way you will learn after the uh, session okay so give me a minute i'll just put up my slides huh? okay okay so like aman has kindly introduced me and so has mr amit i'll just give it take a brief uh, minute and introduce myself i am dr sangeeta chopra i have a like a peculiar combination of background i had uh, four years of uh, corporate experience and uh, then i found my core competency was not so much in corporate it was more in academics so then i spent 20 years in academics and believe me i don't know you will laugh or you will uh, feel that it was the correct realization now after total 25 years in my career uh, i have found couple of my competencies one is english coaching and now again i'm steering back to corporate executive education learning and development because now i feel i'm well positioned to take from academics back to corporate sector and contribute to the growth of you know budding professionals like you and even seasoned executives right okay anyway as we proceed you will see how we are speaking of core competency and then we can relate okay okay so many a time you would have heard of two terms group and a team okay i mean there are some pictures here just a minute can you all look at the picture on the screen of steve jobs is it visible to everybody just raise your hand like this if it's visible is it visible am i audible to everybody yes aman am i audible to everybody okay great great i got it i got it okay you know in this so this is a total virtual age you know <laughs> where it's more through symbols and all but anyway good i got the message thanks okay uh so you have heard have you all heard of the term group and team say yes if you can raise your hand or if you can have a thumbs up on your screen have you heard of the term group and team everybody okay great all of us who have gathered here we are a group we are not a team right what is a team and what is a group right number one i'll start why are we speaking of team at all see in when you join an organization one is if you are working for some organization say you join an hul or you join some agri company right you will be working in a team you will have a group of people you will have work allocated and mind you it is not just that you will just be for example it's uh, uh, srinidhi right if srinidhi is working on a project it is not that she just does her work and she picks up her bag in the evening and she's off 
No, there will be times when she'll be expected to generally sense if there is a lot of workload on the other team members, she does contribute. What else is an aspect of team? One aspect of team is interdependence. Okay. One is complementary skills. For example, if I take Shubham, see, for example, Shubham is a great speaker and he finds in his team that the members don't have good presentation skills. But ultimately, the objective is to prepare a great presentation, impress the client, ensure there is a conversion to a deal. So here, Shubham steps in and says, this is my core competency, and it will help us achieve the goal of conversion of the deal. And that is the aspect of a team, right? Okay, so let's proceed. So like I said, we are a group here. We are not a team. Why? See. Team is like, for example, think of a cricket team. They have a common purpose. Everybody has a role, right? So if one person goes out, the other person bears the burden. The other person feels the mental burden, the physical burden, the psychological burden, because he knows our team needs X number of runs to win. In the setting which we are here right now, everybody on the screen, I, ISAP team, we are a group. We don't have that kind of a common objective that if one person is minus, then the burden falls on the other person. No. So one great hallmark of a team is your common objective. Right? Okay. There is interdependence. There are complementary skills. By complementary skills, what I mean is you would have seen at your home, you know, for example, normally in households, you would find you know, traditionally what we have seen, uh, seen what are the complementary skills? Say mother is handling the domestic front and father is handling the outside front. Now that is a archaic view, an old view. Okay, now as we evolve, both mother, father share the burden and all. But at the end of the day, you will find in your house also, maybe mother is very good, for example, in networking. Maybe father is very good in financial management. Okay, so that means a complementary skill means one person has some skill, the other person has a different skill, but ultimately it helps you achieve the objective, right? Okay, okay, preferably whenever you have a team, you must have similar interests, thought processes, attitude, and perceptions. See, that's why it's important when you are joining an organization, do try to see that, uh, do we have similar values or is it that we are very different, right? In the long run, you know, how fit you are with the culture of the organization depends on mentally, are you similar or are you different? So like I said, difference between a group and a team. In a team, you have that commonness, you have common attitudes, okay? That is why, honestly, you know, uh, people who have a long marriage, why is it they have a long marriage? Okay, can I have a show of hands? Somebody, can you answer this? Why is it that some people have long marriage and some people just divorce, they're never able to adjust in their marriages? Can I have anybody just unmute yourself and answer? And always remember, I've always said in classes also, those who speak in the class, they are the ones who grow. And if students don't speak, imagine who grows the most, it is the teacher, because the teacher is speaking, okay? So my objective is that, you know, uh, when we are here, even for the brief duration, you must uh, interact, engage, speak up your mind. Okay. Srinidhi, why don't you answer? Srinidhi, just unmute yourself. Tell me, why is it that some couples have long marriage and some couples, they just part away pretty soon? And, and it's a common phenomenon. It's nothing new that I'm saying. Yeah. I can't hear you, Srinidhi. Are you speaking? And others, are you able to listen to Srinidhi? No, Srinidhi, we can't see you. We can't hear you. Can you just unplug and plug yourself again? How many of you can listen to Srinidhi? Just raise your hands. Adarsh, can you listen to Srinidhi? Basav Raja, can you listen to Srinidhi? Huh? Yes, no, no, you are not audible. Srinidhi, you restart karke dekho. 
Adarsh, uh, okay, you tell me, why is it that some people have a short marriage, some have a long marriage? What is the common glue which is required? And Srinithi, you just uh, try to replug or restart. For some reason, I can't hear you. Yeah. Hmm? Adarsh, unmute yourself and tell me. Adarsh, you are still, it's showing mute on your window. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Hello, Adarsh Hello, Mishra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Yeah. Okay. Is my question clear to you, Adarsh? Yes, ma'am. Ah, Why some marriages uh, take more time, like uh, long time, and some marriages uh, got divorced like a uh, short time? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, there, you know, are uh, between them uh, behavior and uh, Behavior also matters, and they're, you know, they're in kind of a, actually, who sentence and who uh, were named Milpara, Kya Hota, Ki Dono Me Match Ni Hota, Hota, on Kijo thinking have a different idea. Ability Nahi Hopati, right? Yeah. That's what you say. Okay. Yes, yeah, something Great. like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adarsh. Thank you. Okay. See, that's what I'm saying in organizations also when you are in a team in an organization, Adarsh, the same logic applies. It's not that naturally compatibility will be there. Sometimes you will have to be emotionally intelligent to be compatible with your organizations. Okay. So that is the lesson we learn from teamwork. Right? So what is, what's important in the personal life, same thing is important in the professional life also. Okay. So let's proceed. Let's take an example. Let's look at some examples of uh, teamwork. You look at this picture, one is Steve Jobs, one is uh, Wozniak, right? And the third one was Ronald Wayne. So uh, they all set up Apple. Now that's history. So in uh, 1976, this uh, shorter one, right? He was uh, Wozniak. So he was working for uh, Hewlett and Packard, but they never listened to his ideas. He was a design guy, a very short guy. He was a design guy, but he never found that receptivity of his ideas in Hewlett and Packard. So he left the job and he joined Steve Jobs and they started the company in a garage. The third person, I mean, whose picture is not here, he is Ronald Wayne. He was there with them for just two weeks and he was looking after all the documentation and all. So the idea is this person, Wozniak, could have very well survived in Hewlett and Packard, but Somehow, he, see, everybody wants to grow. You have your core competency. He found that, okay, money is fine. But, you know, as an engineer, as a visionary, I'm not able to grow because nobody's listening to my ideas. So he immediately shifted and there was a lot of compatibility between the two of them. And they were very young, 26, 21. So they made up a team and then you know what is it that they made up. They, they actually struck fortune. There's another example. I'm giving you these examples because in your career also, when you're joining an organization for a paid job or you have your own startup, or I'm saying even when you'll be working in groups in your study course and all, it's important that you must strike compatibility among your team members. So second example is uh, of, you know, uh, you know, DCM. You know, there were six people who were just chatting you know, in uh, DCM canteen, and uh, then they started up HCL, right? Okay. See, there's a lot of merit in going through academic language. Okay, that is like language, that is like uh, knowledge, which is packed up, which is wisdom, and then uh, it's very useful. So there was a, uh, there was a scholar called Tuckman, right? So uh, in, and he, uh, in 1986, he came out with a model that how is it that teams are formed? Okay, now look at this, what Henry Ford says, coming together is a beginning. You all have come together, that's a beginning. Keeping together is progress. If you stick to each other, that's progress. And if you work together on some venture, some project, that is success, right? Now, Tuckman has given a model of team, which is in four stages, which is forming, storming, norming, performing. Anybody would like to tell me, does it really happen like this? That when you come together to form a team, first it is forming, 
then it is storming, then it is norming, and it is performing. Okay, I'll just take you through the, uh, you know, what is the, I'll just decode each word for you, and then just relate it to your personal life, professional life, and let's hear from you. So first is when a team is formed, okay? You are allocated a team in an organization. It's just mere formation. It's coming together. It's constitution. Second is storming. What do you mean by storming? Hari Krishna Maurya, I can see you on my screen. Will you tell me what do you mean by the term storming? Storm, what does the word storm show to you? You can unmute yourself. You're muted. No, ma'am. Storm ka matlab kya hota? Have you ever seen that there was a storm? There was a storm like in Delhi now we are witnessing some storm, some lightning, thunder, you know, showers. Storm ka matlab kya hota? Badal ga rachta hai na? That's a storm. Hai na? To, yes, ma'am. So what the idea, storming ka matlab kya hota? It, it, here it shows a fight, a clash. First is forming have come together. Storming is when your team is made up. There is a storming. There are some ideological clashes. Norming is then some rules are made. Okay, in our team, we have made a rule that you look after all the Excel work. I will look after all the, uh, you know, contacting the corporates part. So you have some very clear rules. So that's the stage of norming. And once rules are made, you start performing very well. Right, you know the exam. Uh, let me take you back to this example of Wozniak and Steve Jobs. The it was very clear. Wozniak would look after. He was the engineering brain. He looked after the ideas, and you know what Steve Jobs' role was? Like a theater, he would actually, you know, he would immerse himself in product launches. It was unheard of that why how computers can be launched among such fanfare as you would have a movie launch, but. So their roles were very clear. One gives the hardcore design, one gives the marketing blitz, so to say, right? So once again, Tuckman's model of team formation says forming, storming, norming, forming. Okay, forming is coming together. Storming is, you can say, clash. Norming is, there are rules. Performing is, you start showing results, okay? So I want someone to tell me which according to you is the most important stage. Ayush Mathur, will you try? Which according to you is the most important? Is storming. Yeah. Yeah, somebody was saying, who Abhishek, you were saying something? Storming, yeah. ma'am. Second one, storming. Okay, great. So one view we have got, it is storming. Very good. How about I somebody think... else? Tell me, which, which stage do you think is most important? So I think perform, performing, performing. Different views are there. I respect your views. See, at the end of the day, organization wants you to perform. Organization wants you to show results. So I would say both are correct. Performing is most important. But what sometimes really happens, see, it's quite possible. It's a, it's a mature set of people. They already have common attitudes, right? So there, there wasn't some major storming, right? But by and large, when ideas come to the table, you may have some sparks, you may have some flashes, you may have some kind of clashes, right? So I would say, you know, out of eight out of nine cases, you are going to have some storming. So storming is very important, but there has to be a very mature handling of storming, okay? I'll not take it far. I mean, if you have seen sometimes, you know, your, your parents fighting or siblings fighting, no storming hi hota hai. But after that, once rules are clear, the kind of beautiful relationship everybody enjoys, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. So again, uh, so this is what I'm showing to you. If you see forming, people have come together. Storming, you see what kind of clashes are there. And you know, these kind of arrows show that, you know, the, the tempers run very high. Norming is when you have very clear rules and then you have performing. Performing is they contribute to a task. And last is adjourning. In organizations, I mean, typical is your, a good example is IT organizations. When there is a team, you come together, but after a job is done, the team is adjourned. It's case to case. It, it doesn't happen in all organizations, 
but at times you may have teams which disband or which they leave also because like one of our friends said performing is the most important stage so after performing task completed project delivered to a client in the us so the team is now adjourned right? right. <coughs> okay so there's a very beautiful concept called synergy i am not giving any definition to you right now but let me ask you so what do you see here somebody will tell me let me see who all are here what do you see on the screen manushri 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 can you just unmute yourself and what do you see on the screen i just my question is very simple what do you see on the screen just that Anji, what about up? What do you see on the screen, Manushri? I can't hear you. Are you speaking? No, I think there's some problem. I can't hear you. Others, can you hear, uh, Miss Manushri? No, ma'am. Okay, Manushri ji, I can't hear you. Maybe you can just replug yourself. Ditti Sood, ah, Miss Ditti Sood, what is, do you see on the screen? If can I request you to unmute yourself? Thank you so much. Yeah, ma'am, it shows that one plus one is equal to three. It so shows. Do you think it's correct, Ditti? Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Ditti? It's Ditti or Ditti? Ditti. Ditti. Ha. Huh? So Ditti, uh, is it correct? One plus one is three. Ma'am, mathematically it is not uh, correct, but uh, in some situations. Uh, if two persons uh, are capable of doing the things and are excellent in doing the work, then this can could happen. Absolutely correct. Very good. I'd like to clap for you. So this is something called synergy, right? When one plus one, the outcome is not just additive. Like Diti said, additive, if I was looking at it, it would just be two. But the outcome is multiplicative. See, because when two people are working peacefully in harmony, then the output that you get, it is so much more than their individual output pushed together. You know, there are so many things, honestly, having worked in the organization, sometimes things get very boring. Sometimes mind doesn't work. Sometimes there is no critical thinking happening. But the minute you are there with a person, one, see, human beings all need a lot of social approval. We are social beings. We are not like, we are not like an inanimate pen, right? So when somebody is working with me, you get a lot of energy, you know, having spoken to somebody, learning about their experiences. So what you give in terms of your ideas, your output is so much more vis-a-vis -vis if you were doing it alone. I don't know if any of you have experienced it in your group project, or, you know, sometimes have you felt that when you're working in a group project that, oh, am I capable of doing so well? I never knew that. Because when you're just working solo, sometimes there's a lot of boredom which seeps in. You find the work is very repetitive. But the minute when you are in a team, sometimes you even try to outdo you, your peers. Sometimes there's an element of competition also. But nevertheless, the output is great when you are working with somebody, right? See, because honestly, I'll keep going back here. You think the organization which Steve Jobs had built, I mean, it was such an onerous burden. It was such a huge task. Could he have done alone? No, but the minute you have somebody, you know, you can complain to the person. You can, you have a sounding board with whom you can share your ideas, right? Okay. Okay, now, I'm going to take you through a parable of tortoise and hare, right? You all have, uh, I'm sure you all have grown up listening to that, right? One minute. You all have grown up listening to that. So let's look at this parable, but there is a shift here, right? They are telling us that, uh, you know, how teamwork can be used to win. And here you would find at the end of the fable, Fable is that it's a, it's a much storied, you know, spoken by everybody, passed on to two generations. You'll find how once you know what is your core competency, then you all can win, right? 
by the way do we all know what is our core competency what is okay i'll just uh, if i have spoken this word competency many a times let me just uh, spell it out competency is a combination of knowledge skill ability see earlier whenever organizations were interviewing people selecting people they would just focus on if it the person has the knowledge skill or the abilities but now organizations are saying we don't want see it's quite possible somebody has the knowledge but not the right attitude so what they're saying is competency is it's actually behavior in action for example a competency could be somebody can get things done if you can get things done that means you have the knowledge you have the skill you have the ability and the attitude also right okay with that now let's see how this parable tells us about teamwork so uh, my only request to all of you is once i'm going through the parable at the end of it um, just tell me what you understood from this thing right that's my only thing right okay so tortoise and the hare you see they are sitting together and uh, <clears throat> Okay, one minute. So uh, obviously, you know, they they wanted to have a race, and horse always, you know, sorry, the hare was very arrogant, very, uh, you know, egotistic, and said, "I'm going to win." And our uh, uh, timid tortoise said that I'll also be part of the race. Right? Okay. Okay. So one minute. Okay, so they decided to say, so they said, okay, let's have a race and now the race begins. Okay, so here you see where you have a flag on the mountains, the target and what do you see that the hare has far, far, far surpassed the tortoise. Okay, this is something we all know. Okay, so there's nothing new in that. Let's proceed now. Okay, so now, uh, obviously, uh, so in the first, just a minute. So in the first case, this person is pretty far off and he decided decides to take a nap because he thinks he has a comfortable margin. But this person goes plodding and the moral is to a slow and steady wins the race. Okay. So there's nothing new in that. Okay. Now, where is the twist? So the moral is slow and steady wins the race, right? So this is the version we all know. Now let's see what's the difference. Now the the obviously the hare is very miffed up. He's very annoyed, angry. He says, "Can we have another race?" And the tortoise says, "Great, we can have another race." Okay, okay. So this time the hare he went all the way out. He did not sleep in between, and he knew he's going to win. So he won by several miles because obviously he has uh, he had more physical ability vis-a-vis -vis the poor tortoise, right? Okay. The story doesn't end here. Anybody would like to guess how it's leading to teamwork? I can give you a, a vote for that if you would like to, right? If you would like to hear the story from me, we can go ahead, right? Okay. Now the uh, tortoise is thinking, how is it that I can win over the hare, right? So now, obviously, our, uh, you know, our timid man, uh, tortoise is very strong in spirit so he says can we have another race and uh, this time now what he says is we will go through a different route now this is what I want you to understand number one while the focus of the session is not this you all must know what is your core competency so your core competency could be technical competency your core competency could be that you, you that your networking is very good your core competency could be that I am a very poor networker, okay, but I'm a great worker, okay. Somebody's core competency could be that I do not say no to the authority figure. I'm a very humble person. So you must, must, must identify what is your core competency. You know, remember it like this. I'll give you an example. You know, when... Uh, <clears throat> When Sonia Gandhi formed the UPA government, she could have very well been the uh, prime minister of the country. She did not, okay, because uh, somewhere she was playing the martyr card also, and, and she did not want to be in the crosshairs of everybody. So she decided to have Dr. Manmohan Singh in the driving seat. Why? Because she knew his core competency was what economic wizard he was. So he, she knew that he is the one who can handle the beast of the country's economy. 
and i think it was uh, not long back 6 to 8 months back you know uh, mr narayan murthy himself said that what great work dr manmohan singh has done right so the idea is you must know what's your core competency right okay so let's proceed so now the uh, the tortoise is saying let's go through a different route so now again they are, they are going so the hare took off and ran at top speed okay and here you have the goal okay okay now one minute <clears throat> the tortoise got into the river swam to the opposite bank and finished the race so what the trick tortoise had done was there was a stretch of river in between he deliberately chose a route where there was a river so that he could defeat the hare okay so one lesson is that in your in your life in your course assignments in your uh, actual work assignments in organizations if you have a say you must choose assignments where you are good at okay it's like saying you can't ask the monkey to dance you cannot train the monkey to dance so if you think you are a technical guy but you are not a socialite so then do not go for opportunities you know like uh, you know socializing with the vendors and all if you are a if you are a desk guy i am very good in office but if you think i should hobnob with the clients in some you know uptown restaurant i am poor at that don't take me there so you see a small animal like a tortoise he chose a route where there was a river and he won okay okay till now the team aspect has still not come so let's proceed right so the moral is you find your core competency and then change the playing field to suit your core competency okay so if you are a good speaker make sure you create opportunities to give presentations right and if your strength is that you are great at analysis then you then you do some kind of a uh, desk research and all right okay so working to your strengths will help you get noticed okay but the story has still not ended so now what happens is both of them sit together and they they had become friends right so they said now let's do something so that we both can benefit what happens okay so now they are just hatching out you know i think we could do much better if we try to help each other so now there is a conscious desire to come together step 1 so if you see now uh, all of you my dear friends now just see now this is something unheard of what is different over here would somebody tell me now there is a tortoise on the back of hair somebody can you tell me uh, ridhima raj can you take a guess ridhima what's happening here um, did you imagine that the these are two adversaries and now hare is trying to carry the tortoise through the land patch ridhima no, ma'am they are working as a team because great now you see the hare is very good on the land stretch okay because he his limbs are such that he can really cover the distance so for the one patch where it is land it is like his core competency now tortoise is on top of the he is on the back of the hare okay okay now where the water stretch is here okay okay srinidhi can you tell me what's happening in the water stretch who is on whose back let's see if your microphone is working now let's see if i can hear you srinidhi try karo srinidhi speak no your microphone is not working okay ankit vyas will you tell me what's happening in the river sorry srinidhi it's not working yes ma'am yeah ankit will you tell me have you ever seen two opponents so to say they are opponents now yes, hair hair is on back of the tortoise i mean yes, what do you ha uh, ankit batao what do you get out of it is it a good thing to do यस मैम अच्छी बात है दोनों मिलके काम करेंगे जैसे वो पहले जमीन के ऊपर कछुए के ऊपर कछुआ बैठा था ऊपर खरगोश के तो अब जैसे पानी का समय आया तो जैसे इसके अंदर एबिलिटी है पानी में चलने की तो ये इसके ऊपर बैठा तो टीम अच्छा काम कर पाएगी यू नो आई एम सो हैप्पी दैप्पीव होल सेशन you एक्चुअली सेड इट राइट सो दे आर वर्किंग टूगेदर वेरी गुड थैंक अंकित थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सुरेंद्र जी आप अपना माइक्रोफोन ठीक करो बच्चे <laughs> नहीं आ रहा ओके नाउ यू सी देयर इज अ पैच 
now again which is a land stretch now what's what's happening in the land stretch again uh, let me ask somebody else okay avais khan avais khan will you tell me what's happening in the last stretch now who is on top of who avais khan can you unmute yourself avais yeah avais can you unmute yeah what's happening on the third patch who is on uh, who's back hmm some tortoise on the back of rabbit ha tortoise is Again, on the back of the hare because so, rabbit is better in land very good so now you see yahi aapka core competency hota hai here the core competency of the hare is he is very good on the land he can race like lightning speed he has but his limitation is he is not good in water obviously he can't swim through uh, water on the other hand our man tortoise is can swim through water so collectively they have partnered and they have achieved the goal now that is something which is team work okay okay so moral of the story is you work in a team and you use each other's core competencies okay 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 there is one thing i'd like to say team work is about uh, situational leadership matlab ek situation ki leadership i'll tell you one thing i was just uh, when i was uh, just looking through my slides one example came to me 2008 you all know there was terror attack uh, in mumbai taj hotels okay now it was around 9:30 pm and uh, obviously they had they had various uh, banquet halls one was japanese restaurant one was a banquet hindustan unilever they were throwing a party to uh, welcome their uh ceo elect that means mr paul he, they, it was just to welcome them it was a dinner party right it was 9:30 right and uh, they heard some gunshots they heard some shots you know some shots you know as people do in the wedding apna shots karte hai na so they thought it was some celebration happening obviously it was not that we all know it was terrorist attacks so there was a lady i think she was 24 years old her second name was g a j a g a d jagad situational leadership it was there she was not empowered to take decisions but because situation was this she took decisions she said all lights off all guests under the table sab log table ke niche aa jaye she gave instructions people should not use their mobiles and they went about serving water to people and next day morning obviously the fire service was called and all the guests had to they moved out from the back staircase situational leadership team mein ye hota hai tatas mein itna empowerment hai a 24 year old girl jagad j a g a d you can do google also so she was managing the banquet but who gave her the leadership position to handle how to handle a situation if terrorists are knocking on the door outside or who have come to the hotel so in a good team depending on the situation you become the leader right okay okay this is what i was saying okay now this is the philosophy of uh, steve jobs he says my model for business is the beatles you know a lot of times people will get inspired from various uh, you know various it could be a singer it could be a painter it could be anybody right so you can also find your inspiration from anyone you know sometimes you can find your inspiration from a flock of uh, birds how they all you know move up in the air and you know the angle at which all the uh, birds move up how is it that they are able to gain flight because the angle at which they move they cut through the air pressures right okay okay now this is something i want you all to know and uh, i mean please do remember it so there were two there was a, a scholar called katz k a t z he said at all the three levels you require three skills okay one is supervisory in all likelihood if you all are freshers and with no work experience you will join at the level of supervisory or entry level right so there you need three skills technical human conceptual now you see as you go up in middle your technical by and large remains same or little less your human skill remains the same your conceptual increases now you have to think more 
as you move up to the top, maybe you are a CEO, your technical is not that much. You are not going to be coding the program for a, for a software package, but your human skill will be very high and your ability to conceptualize, right? So if you are in a team, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times if, and I'll be happy to see some of you after five years, six years going to the middle level and then after 10 years, CEOs of some organizations, right? As you move up your human skill, your social skills, talking nicely, empathy, understanding people will be very, very high. So in a team per se, your human skills are very, very important. Okay, sometimes you have to go down, sometimes you have to assert, okay? So I always say your team working is like a form of art. You just have to be sensitive enough, right? Okay. You see these two bulls who are plowing true okay so if one of them doesn't move the other one will also not be able to move that is a simple dream and i always say the best example is your home i mean i'd, I'd like someone to tell me when it was covid time was it your mother who was working everything or everybody else was happy i mean i've seen in my home and i'm sure it was the same everywhere you didn't have maids there were so many restrictions and everybody was working from home so, you know, even the space became very tight, right? Everybody's office was home, right? So, Miss uh, Midila, right? Uh, can you share with me in your family when it was COVID time, everybody was shut behind doors. Did you find everybody actually rolled up their sleeves and worked as a team? Hmm? Midila, right? Can I, am I pronouncing your name correctly, Midila? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I have form. Everyone has taken their own responsibilities and work together during a cold times. Found that suddenly there was a lot of work. Obviously, people were eating delicacies. Khana bhi acha chahiye tha, and you know everything. So you know you had to ensure that your stocks were correct. You had to ensure you had the medicines and everything. So everybody then started something or the other. So this is what your complementary skills. Okay. Somebody who had good connection with doctor would ask, okay, what is it that we should be drinking every day? Okay. So everybody was doing for the other. It would be very with online shopping. So they said, I'm going to order this from there, there, there. No need to step out. Did you all observe it in your homes? Mr. Zishan, would you tell me, did you find some phenomena of a team emerging in your household when it was COVID pandemic time, Mr. Zishan, am I pronouncing your name correctly, Zishan? Yes, ma'am, you're pronouncing it correctly. Am I audible, ma'am? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Tell me. Yes, ma'am, uh, as there was a need of uh, teamwork while COVID, there was everything was shut down. So we had to work as a team in our family itself. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody had to do something. And yes, again, I say, see, always see, you know, sports are one of the best uh, learning grounds. If you are playing cricket or football, everybody has a role to play. Somebody is fielding, somebody is bowling. allocated So you cannot say, I'm fielding. No, you need someone to field. So everybody is doing a critical task. Okay. Okay. Let's proceed. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, differences between group and team. Always remember when you join an organization, you may be in sales, you may be in marketing, you may be in HR. <coughs> Don't make it just a group. Okay. If you have a special skill, say, of making presentations, you need to tell your team, I can help you with that thing. If you know pivot tables very well, so you can tell your uh, team members, I can help you, you know, analyze this data through pivot tables. If in a presentation, you know how to put graphs easily, right? So you need to say, I can put a scatter plot graph, right? So that is what makes it a team. If you are not doing that, then it is like everybody is in the same lane, okay? Then it is like, you are just going to the organization to make good money but while there is no desire to help each other, okay? I'll just take one point, okay? 
Okay, for example, uh, let's say approach determined by, in a team, the approach is determined by the members. So there is a lot of democracy, collectiveness, while in a group, it is the leader. It's like there is a top-down relationship. I'll tell you what you have to do, right? So if you see uh, in a team, accountability is mutual. So if you fail the cricket match, it is just wrong to say that's because of the captain. It's everybody's responsibility, right? And in a group, it's all individual. Okay. Okay. So, uh, one just okay. a group, if a group has to, one okay, if a group, a group becomes a team, when, when leadership becomes a shared activity, accountability is not individual, it's collective. The group develops its own mission. It's important when you have a team, there should be a mission. Okay. For example, if you work in an organization, what is your mission? Is it that we need to have new, that we need to acquire new clients? Your mission could be that we want our customer service has to be very good. So once there is a mission, it really, really drives everybody, right? Problem solving becomes a way of life, not a part-time activity. I'd like to give you an example. You must have heard of Toyota. How many of you have heard of Toyota? Raise your hands, great. In Toyota, what they do is, they very strongly believe in innovation, right? Innovation, innovation is what? Somebody tell me, Mahantesh Kumbar, you have not spoken till now. What do you, when I say innovation, what do you think of it? Mr. Mahantesh, unmute karo, unmute yourself. Mahantesh, you're not, you're still muted. Are you trying to speak? Yeah. Okay, anybody else who'd like to tell me what do you, what do you mean by innovation? The term innovation, what does it mean? <coughs> Ma'am, innovation means new idea comes from. Excellent. Innovation is a uh, new idea. I'll just add here. Innovation is always, you know, doing something better. You change something, you make something more productive. While invention is yes, when sir. it is something for the first time. Okay. So I'll give you credit for that. You're correct, right? For example, Thomas Edison, when he invented bulb, he did 20,000 experiments. Invention of bulb by Thomas Edison is invention. But the changes we make every, we, you know, we make changes in our production, which we make changes in the way we are serving our customers. For example, if HDFC Bank has put a bot, to answer the customer's queries, it is innovation, doing something better, okay? So what I was telling you, I was telling you about Toyota. So Toyota strongly, it's a Japanese firm, they strongly believe in innovation. And you know what is, and how do they ensure innovation happens, that there is improvement in teams? What they say is, innovation can happen when people work in a team. So what they say is, you know, if five people are working, you can improve only when one is willing to help the other. So in their recruitment process only, they try to check you for team working. If you are a good team worker, then chances are recruitment is there. Because, you know, what they think is if we hire an engineer, engineer will do his job. But if we want some improvement, you know, Japanese believe in the concept of Kaizen small incremental improvement chota chota improvement karte rahenge. and they very strongly believe in it and they believe if we have to make this improvement of kaizen or innovation then people should be able to work in a team that means helping each other so this becomes one of their key factors in their recruitment process only right okay so in in a way what i'm saying is they don't want solo contributors they want contributors to the process improvement okay. okay 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 if you see this this picture is showing it's less about me and it's more about we it's amazing how much you can accomplish when it doesn't matter who gets the credit so if you see here everybody's trying to pull a creature through it's not about who is doing it it's a collective exercise it's the outcome which is important right
Okay, there is something called a 90-10 principle. Anybody has heard of it? Hmm? Anybody has heard of it? 90-10 principle. Okay, I'd like to ask all of you one thing. I mean, it will be good if you can uh, have a show of hands. Has there been a time in your friend circle or in your work group or in your family when uh, you were very angry because of some reason, but you exhibited a lot of patience, you controlled yourself. It could even be you told yourself, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. And just because you did not lose your temper, you, you know, things were managed well, right? Vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, having lost the temper, burst out, you know, has something like this happened when you, when you found that, okay, it was very wise of me to control myself, though it is very difficult. Anybody, uh, have you experienced anything like this? By the way, let me tell you, most people, when they resign from their jobs, it's mostly because they are not able to regulate themselves. You have some tiff with the boss, some peer, something you don't like, and you just say, I'm resigning. It could, and you don't even think, okay, I've completed four and a half. I should stay for six more months so that I can have my gratuity also. You just say, I'm going to leave and in the huff and puff, you send your email of resignation. Anybody, have you had any such example where you did not, where you exercise self-regulation or it could be where you just lost out. Anybody? Hmm? Anybody? Let me see who all are here. Hmm. Yes, okay. Anybody would like to contribute, anybody? See, it does happen a lot of times, you know. Rishikesh, your name is Rishikesh, right? Or is it Rishikesh? Rishikesh, right? It is Rishikesh. Ah, Rishikesh, tell me. Uh, see, firstly, you know what I want to tell you, everybody. This is just one lecture you are attending of mine. You will be attending lectures everywhere, you know, different programs, different courses, maybe speakers from different countries. Always, always, always speak in the class. You can make it a point, at least I'll speak once. And believe me, once you speak once and the kind of happiness you get, you think I'm going to speak a second time, a third time. And believe me, you learn when you speak, right? And my objective of the session is that you all learn, okay? Okay, so please, where is Rishikesh gone? Uh, Rishikesh? Yes, ma'am. Rishikesh, tell me, has there been a time when you control your anger, and later, yes, Rishikesh, I can't see you. Where are you? Yes, ma'am. Ha, Rishikesh, batao. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, uh, ek bar uh, mere university mein, uh, the uh, ek accident hua tha mere saath. Okay. So, chota accident tha. So, udhar jagda jalo hua, jo samne wala tha uske saath mera. Lekin, fir okay. uh, maine jagda jada bada hai nahi aur uh, nikal gaye ham dono bhi. तो बाद में उस दिन मुझे पता चला कि वो जो जिसके साथ मेरा झगड़ा था वो एक्सटर्नल था हमारे मैंने मतलब एक्सटर्नल एग्जामिनर था आया था ओके तो मैंने उधर कंट्रोल नहीं किया होता तो गुड सो हाउ डिड यू कंट्रोल योर एंगर इन दैट मोमेंट ऑफ टाइम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मेरे एग्जाम को लेट हो रहा था इसलिए मैंने ज्यादा खींचा नहीं उधर ओके गुड ओके ओके नो वेरी गुड एक्सीलेंट आई लाइक टू कंग्रेचुलेट यू ऑन दैट इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट यू नो वी कंट्रोल आर सेल्स इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एनी टाइम एवरीवेयर ओके गुड सो यू हैव एक्चुअली प्रैक्टिस वट आई एम गोइंग टू टीच सो देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड नाइंटी टेन प्रिंसिपल नाइंटी टेन प्रिंसिपल इज टेन परसेंट ऑफ लाइफ इज मेड अप ऑफ वट हैपन्स टू यू लाइक इन योर केस ऋषिकेश टेन परसेंट वॉज वट हैपन टू यू ठीक है जो हुआ आपके साथ दैट वॉज ओनली टेन परसेंट But what is the ninety percent? 
So 90% was the way you react to it, right? So that's the 10-90 principle, okay? So we can't, for example, you can't control a traffic red light. You cannot. It's that 10%. But you can control your own reaction to it. You can be angry that, oh, I'm getting late. It's a flight. It's a class. Okay, you keep, and your reaction could even be, next time I'll start 30 minutes early. Your reaction could be that you are, if you are in a cab, you are just, you know, being very annoyed, throwing your tantrum at the driver. So nine, for any situation, 10% is the fixed which happens to you. 90% is what you do. And like in your case, that 90% you did beautifully, right? Okay. Now let's look at an example, right? Of this 1090. Okay. Okay. Everybody read this example with me. Okay. I'll just tell you. So you are having, it's case of a family where you're having breakfast with your family, right? And your daughter knocks over a ship. Actually, she spills some tea on your business shirt. And if it is a white shirt, you know how unhappy you would be, right? You don't have any control of what happened. It could be a small daughter or whatever, right? What happens next will be determined by how you react. See, a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, I'll give you a parallel, you know. Now, this, is, this looks like the start of the day, 10% you know, your tea is spilled on your shirt, what happens? So we look at two scenarios. Please look at it carefully, right? Okay, one possible reaction is you curse, okay? You scold your daughter that, okay, you've thrown a cup of tea on me and then what would happen? She'll break down in tears. After scolding her, you turn to your spouse. Spouse means your wife and you criticize her that, okay, why did you put the cup so close? to the edge of the table and obviously a verbal battle, you start scolding everybody, you know, you storm upstairs, change your shirt, you're coming back, your daughter starts crying, she did not finish the breakfast, okay, you know, and uh, she also misses the bus, okay. Your, your spouse also has to leave for work, you rush to the car and drive your daughter to school, you are late, you drive very fast, and there is a delay and you have to pay a traffic fine also. See, all of this, how it is happening because your 90% went bad, okay? You could have been just smart enough to say, okay, it happens. What is the cost of the shirt? 2,000 rupees, forget it, okay? I am not going to spoil my day, okay? Okay, everybody please uh, listen to it carefully because I'm going to be asking you, okay? Okay, your daughter runs to the school building and she doesn't say goodbye. You know how bad it feels when your loved one is going, doesn't turn back and say goodbye, okay? You know, you arrive at the office 20 minutes late. You find you have forgotten your briefcase. Your start of the day is terrible and it continues. It seems to get worse and worse. And, and uh, you, you just, you don't, you're not happy, okay? When you come home, you find everybody is very closed, not happy because you were shouting at everybody in the morning and daughter, why? Okay. So, what was the 10% over here? Hmm? Hmm? Zeeshan, will you tell me what was the 10% in this case? What was the 90%? Is this 90% was correct or not? Uh, Ma'am, 10% is uh, how he reacted, but it become, eventually it become 90% of his day. No, no, 10 was the event. 10% was coffee was spilled over. Okay. Yes, can you do so, can you do something about it? No, ma'am. It just happens. Okay. Yes. 90% is your reaction. Do you think that uh, our protagonist, our hero, could have managed this thing differently? Yes, ma'am. He absolutely could have managed this differently. Okay. So but okay. he chose to not. Very good. By the way, you speak very well. Your sentence construction is very good, Zishan. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now let's look at the second option. Okay. Now, Rishikesh, if our actor had been emotionally cool, like you were in your situation, then what the reaction could have been? Here is what could have and should have been done. Tea pours over you. Your daughter is scared and she's about to cry. You could have said, it's okay, dear. You just need to be more careful next time, okay? Obviously, if somebody spills something on your shirt and it's a brand new shirt and you are bound to be annoyed, so you can just say, okay, be careful next time. Just that, okay? You take a towel, you go upstairs, you take a new shirt and 
your briefcase. You come back down in time. So you have not wasted any time. You look through the window and you see your child getting onto the bus. Okay. So see all the right emotional connect has happened. She's happy. You didn't have any verbal battle with your wife. She turns and waves. I mean, I don't know. It's such a happy moment when your loved one, father, mother, child waves at you. Okay. So that's a small emotional movement, but we, nobody wants a bad start to the day, right? Okay. So arrive five minutes early and you cheerfully greet your staff. Your boss is happy. He comments on how good the day you are having. You know, like it or not, if we are happy at home, if our day is happy, we carry it to the office. Why do you think people get up at four in the morning and do some meditation? That is the time when energy is very, very high. Why do you think senior people, they take out time even for the morning walks or, or some workout? Why? Because if you are doing some physical activity, it takes away the stress. So the idea is you need to start your day on a very positive note. And that's what now this gentleman is doing. So this is because of how you reacted. Okay, now what's happening in the second scenario? I mean, um, Miss Donapati, will you tell me what's happening in the second scenario? I want... Yeah, if you just call it. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Actually, in the second scenario, the uh, father uh, he could control his emotions and reacted um, very good with his daughter, and that is why uh, the change was different, and the scenario was different, and the day was different for him. Tell me, do you? also regulate yourself? Do you have this ability to manage your anger? See, some people cannot. And let's be honest about it. I mean, let's not... Uh, the objective of this session, one of the incidental objectives would be that next time you encounter such a situation, you can think. Okay, the case let in the class and it said it's better to regulate. So maybe it's good to regulate. So my second question to you is, do you also are able to get yourself? Ma'am, that depends on the situation. And uh, sometimes I would be able to do that. Okay. That's also correct. A lot of times it's situational. Yeah, true. Sometimes it depends on the gravity also. And I mean, honestly, I've seen it sometimes, you know, uh, it even changes through the age. I mean, when I started teaching 20 years back, initially I was very righteous. I would be very strict with the students. And uh, sometimes I would lose my cool when they would really, uh, you know, shout and all in the class. But over the years, I've, I've also moderated. I've also adopted the middle path. Okay. okay. So obviously now we know that the second case is better. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just uh, taking another thing. You must have heard of emotional intelligence, you know, okay? It's a related concept. Everybody has till now been talking of, you know, your, your IQ. That means what are the marks you have got? What is your intelligence? Now, this aspect is your emotional intelligence. So if I can just rattle out emotional intelligence is five things. Self-awareness, self-regulation, we have just done. Self-awareness, self-regulation, social skills, motivation, and empathy, okay? In simple words, if I can say, it has social skills also, motivation also, empathy also. You have a person who works in an office very bright, IQ is high, okay. But he's not mingling around with people. So that means emotional intelligence is very low. Social skills nahi hai. On the other hand, you have somebody, good IQ plus also social with people, self-regulation is there. That is, and so people like the second category and these are the category of people who are likely to get promoted. So goes the popular saying, IQ gets you recruited and EQ, that means emotional quotient gets you. Can somebody fill it for me? I'll repeat. If promoted, ma'am. Uh, what, what did you say? Promoted. Oh, wow. Very, very good. Excellent. IQ you. gets you. Recruited EQ gets you promoted. Okay. You must have seen sometimes in the classroom also if there is somebody who's not very social, not talking, you know, he would not be happy in the class. Okay. Likewise, in the work organization also, you must have those minimum social skills. Okay. Thank you so much for the answer. Good. 
So one is we've done team working. Second is incidentally, we've also spoken what is emotional intelligence? I'll repeat it for you. Self-awareness, self-regulation, we just did. That's like a regulator, right? Third is motivation, okay? Social skills and empathy, right? Okay, I think this is the last slide. Now, uh, no, that's a very beautiful slide. Okay, 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 just a minute. Okay, there are some, uh, some messages in the chat box. I think once we do this thing, I'll... Uh, 100% address that. So I'll just address the messages in the chat box. So if you look at this picture, what is it saying? It is symbolically telling us every member in a team has times when they need support. You see in the first picture, everybody's on the first bench. In the second picture, this person seemingly needs help. In the third stage, the middle person needs help. In the last stage, the last person needs help. So that means whenever you're working, Sometimes, you know, somebody will need help. The idea is, again, I say the best place is to learn from your family. In your family, do you keep a register that today I help here, today mommy help, today papa help, so now you will help. You, do, you are never so calculative. So likewise, in an organization, you are never so calculative. How much I'm helping and how much is coming back to me. Okay, you never say, okay, I have stayed back late for many days or you tell your group, friends i helped you in your presentation now you owe it back to me that's not team okay right okay so in team it's important you have some emotion, emotional connect also okay so that was something i prepared for team and uh, so broadly what we have done is what is a group what is a team so my idea to all of you is wherever you work or you are studying make it like a team okay and always remember if there are some fights happening in a team. So just think it's my storming stage. After storming will come norming where you have some rules and then you will start performing. Okay. Okay. And then we did this, uh, you know, emotional intelligence also. Okay. I'll just take some points from the chat box. And then if you have some questions, you can just think about it and you can ask. Okay. So let me just minute this. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, Aditya Pratap Singh, I got your message. Thanks. Kotapati, I got your message. So, says lack of understanding. That was one point. Junaid Khan had one message. Okay, the understanding between them. Yes, Kotapati, that's the answer. Okay, Junaid Khan. Okay, good understanding between them. They have long marriage. Very good, Junaid. That's the answer. Good understanding. And believe me, when you say good understanding leads to a long marriage, it's not given to us on a platter. You know, they will evolve some systems. It could be uh, about expenditure. How do we share the expenditure? It could be how do we make more savings? It could be how do we make our life more social? So this has to be developed. You know, just like you nurture a land and a seed becomes into a plant. In a relationship also, it could be an organization or a home. You have to talk it out, right? Okay. Okay, one minute. Some other message. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, Junaid, I think uh, you're not allowing us to unmute. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. Now, any questions you all have, anybody? And my recommendation is, I mean, can I just uh, one thing to some other message? Okay. Okay, Rishikesh, sometimes we do things in moment of heat, but in later we realize it will come back to us and we can't control our emotions. I think you are right, Rishikesh. Rishikesh. A lot of times on the spur of the moment. So, uh, I mean, uh, if you saw that movie of Jessica Lal, her murder also was happened on the spur of the moment. But sometimes it can have long, it can have, you know, permanent consequences on your life. You know, it could even be when you are dealing with an authority figure, it could be your teacher, it could be your boss in the organization. You cannot make it on the spur of the moment. You have to think. Sometimes it's a good idea to just you know, internally tell yourself, okay, calm down, calm down. Don't say anything, right? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kotapati. Lovely message. So it's a thank you message. Great. 
Okay, now any questions you have, any ideas you want to share? Do you think you are a good team worker, right? Hmm? Any, any, uh, anything, you know, any question you have, anything from what we have done. Okay, by the way, the last point we covered emotional intelligence. Everybody with me, you can tell me. What is the first point? First is self-awareness, okay? Self-awareness means what? Or, and how do you become more self-aware? I mean, it's not a, it's not a physical diagnostic test no, that you have a blood prick and you know more about yourself. How do you become more aware of yourself? Self-awareness is the first thing of emotional, emotionally intelligent behavior. Self-awareness, ma'am, I would like to say something. Yeah, self-awareness yes. is basically knowing ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we can do self-awareness by self-assessment. We can take uh, different sessions like writing. We can write our emotions, our strength and weaknesses, and our emotional intelligence, how we react to some situation, and how could we react to that instead of reacting to something. I think these are uh, some methods by which can we uh, do our self -assessment. Good. Okay, Zishan. Your name is Zishan, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Zishan, I think a while back I told you that you construct your sentences very well. Yes, that your speech is very clear. Okay, Zishan? Yes, okay, yeah. So tell me, um, are you likely to remember this sentence for long or, or it's just a passing comment which doesn't make a difference for you? Tell me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I couldn't understand what you said. Saying, I told you a while back that your sentence construction is very good, your speech yes, is very good. clear, and you are able to you know, convey your idea very clearly. So there are no ups and downs. So my question yes. to you, Zishan, is are you likely to remember this comment of mine for long or, or it's yes, just... Yes, sure. For sure. The, why I'm saying is, Zishan, and did you know this thing about yourself? Mm, not yet, ma'am. You okay. said. So, okay. So, let me tell you, it always happens like this. Why I'm making this point? Your self-awareness, the points you have said that we take courses, we write down our strengths and weaknesses, it's all correct. 100% correct. But if you have to increase your self-awareness, one very yeah. simple yeah. tool is more you interact with new with people, people and new situations. A lot of times when you travel, sometimes you just take conversations with people on airport and you find that they tell you something about yourself. Sometimes your teachers may tell you something about yourself, right? And then you think, oh, I never knew about myself. Yes, so my, yes, uh, I would urge everyone that a great way to increase your self-awareness is if you interact with people and, uh, you know, socialize, make friends, talk, you know, exchange information and you'll find that they are also telling you about yourself. I'll just tell you a simple thing. I mean, you know, when I was in six, I think it was eighth standard. So we were studying math. So in math, sometimes when you are writing the notations, you need to write in description that why this is put. So once one of my teachers, this was DPS Noida. So she told me that Sangeeta, you write the narrative very well. And believe me, until then, I had no idea that my spoken or written or any part of English is good. I had never known. So it was news, just like it may be news to you, Zisha, right? So, but I learned this thing about myself and I believed it so much. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I would like to share an incident, ma'am. A few days ago, I met uh, with a professor, with professor. You must have known me, him. Professor Dr. Birender Singh. Yeah. You may know him. Uh, he was guiding me and he asked me to uh, share my experiences throughout my life, or, uh, like my childhood journey or everything. Then he told me about myself many things which I have never known before. Okay. So I think that's a very good way. About telling uh, and I'm that, sure that must yes, be very valuable for you. That yes, must be very valuable. For yes, right? It was oh. a life lesson. Absolutely. So what you get from, uh, you know, psychological inventories, batteries, books, it's okay. It's good. It's nice to know. But what if some people tell you something, some friends, authority figures, we call them our significant others. Like you value your professor, 
so he is a significant other for you and your parents are your significant others or anybody who is important for you in your life okay so i'd like to uh, thanks for sharing this uh, example with me and i'd like to uh, uh, suggest to all of you that to increase your self awareness engage in genuine authentic conversations with people getting to actually wanting to know people wanting to contribute to them and you will find what will come back to you is that people will also tell you things like oh you are so warm oh you are such a quick thinker and aap sochho ki are i never knew i was a good thinker kisi but say if somebody tells you you say okay it must be true okay and that's how you build your self awareness okay see after all we are human beings and we thrive on human relationships right so it's important be it your study time your work time or your family make genuine relationships okay okay thank you so much i have really really enjoyed the session so much if, if there are any questions i can take it anybody no okay thank you everybody have a great evening thank you thank you so much and i am thankful to everybody you have shared your experiences participated in the session and uh, there is no more joy for a teacher than to have students you know participate and share their experiences okay. thank you thank you okay. ma'am for giving your time hi ji thank, thank you ma'am it was a great day ma'am thank great you so much you. such so nicely organized and my thanks to hi sir thank you ayushi thank you so much she sent a message thank you thank you everybody and thanks thanks to ayushi thank okay thank you amit ji okay ji bye 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 everybody have a nice evening bye bye take care thank you everyone for joining we will meet tomorrow have a nice day.